Uh, I think uh, we are on track, so we still got time um, for our syllabus. So I, I was thinking we will uh, talk a little bit about locally connected. Okay, uh, see a bit of the property and then maybe not prove all the theorems, but prove some interesting one. And only then we move to practice. Okay. Yeah. Maybe let's start first and then later we'll do some announcement for a bit. Okay, um, yesterday, uh, what did we introduce? What did we introduce yesterday? The important definition we had yesterday. A topological space is half connected in what? Yeah, you know. So for any two points in the topological space, there's this a uh, half joining. And uh, joining X and Y. Okay. Or sometimes you will, this one may be a bit uh, not precise what this means. Actually, what this means is a path from X to Y. Okay, why? Why is it a joining X and Y not precise? Because our path will remember the orientation. Okay, so you have a forward path, you have a backward path. Okay. They are different, but they are all path journey X and Y. Why is the orientation? You know? The orientation. Naturally, I mean. Why is there orientation? Why does orientation matter here? Yeah. Thank you. What's the path? What's the path? The path is a function. Function from where to where? Sorry? No? When I ask function from where from to where, I mean from what domain to what co-domain, right? Function from where to where? Sorry? From zero to one. A function from zero to one. Does this, does this line make sense or not? Yes. Close interval from 0 to 1 to x. Okay. So close interval has orientation or not? The order on the interval, right? 0 is less than 1. Okay. You can order everything inside the uh, the close interval. Okay, zero to one. So this order will give you an orientation on the curve. Does that make sense? Right, you send zero to the starting point, right? and then you send the last one, the one, to the ending point. So this give you an orientation. All right. Uh, so we have this uh, path connected topology the space and and really so really you can uh, check that you could really check that from here you could define an equivalence relation using path connectedness okay so we can uh, um, we can define 
define an equivalence relation um, x okay by saying a point x is equivalent to the other point y if there is a path in x from x to y okay and then these uh, equivalent classes we will call it a path component of x okay so this is quite similar to how we define the connected components okay so you know what to check if you want to check for equivalence relation hmm? what do you need to check for equivalence relations yeah reflexivity okay symmetry and then transitivity right so does there exist a path that connect yourself or not constant path right symmetric yesterday we discussed right forward and then backward symmetry we have discussed yesterday right? we compose two parts but we need to make sure we have the right domain okay so we speed up one of the path okay so yeah basically yesterday we took this and then the equivalent classes are called the path components of x so you might wonder um how does this path components relate to connected components? So yesterday we proved what? We proved that um, every, uh, every one, every path connected topological space is connected, but not the other way around, right? Because we have the topologies cycle. It is connected, but it is not path connected, okay? All right, so to explore more of these, eh, we should uh, go a little bit, bit further. Let's go a little bit further. So we need to discuss a local property. So these are local property. So some local properties here. So what are these local properties? of uh, let's say about of and uh, half connected and just connected okay so let's define this so let's define a few local property here so mm -hmm. uh, topological space okay is let's say we want to say that it is let's put a like this is locally connected at a point x. Okay, so what does this mean? So if this is true, if for every open neighborhood, u containing x, there exists a uh, connected neighborhood B also contain X such that uh, V is contained in U. Does it make sense? So we can uh, extend this subset inclusion a bit further. Maybe we add in X inside. So this is quite similar to some basis property right? but here what do we find we find a connected open neighborhood okay not just any open neighborhood okay we find a connected open neighborhood so what does this mean this means that maybe you start with a bigger neighborhood which is not connected but you can always find a smaller uh, open neighborhood which is connected then we will say that uh, at x, uh, the topological space is locally connected because this is only connected within a small thing. And, and what else? So 
we can extend this. If this is true for all points, then we will just say that the uh, topological space is locally connected. So it is locally connected if uh, it is locally connected at every point. Okay, now. So you see, uh, there is the subtlety here. We only define locally connected at some point previously. But this locally connected is just a didn't mention any point. Okay, so if I didn't mention any point, meaning it is locally connected at every point. Does it make sense? Does everyone read, know how to read this definition or not? Yes. Okay, maybe Brian, tell me, uh, how is this, uh, how is a topological space locally connected? Okay, so uh, we didn't describe like that, right? We, we didn't describe that whether a point is locally connected or not. We described a space is locally connected at some point. You know what I mean? Okay, so there's a subtlety here because this subtlety uh, will make you, okay, make you confused. Okay, this kind of subtlety is easy to make you confused. So this local connected is a property of a point or a property of a space. Okay, but here, is a property of a space because I said a topological space is. I didn't say the point is. You get what I mean? So this is a property of a space. So there are two properties here in particular. Does it make sense? Okay. So you need to be careful uh, which uh, this adjective is attached to what uh, kind of objects. Okay. Otherwise, you will get easily confused. Okay. Most of the time, you don't understand Max is because you confuse yourself. Okay, not that Max is hard. It's you are hard. Yeah, you are hard. You make yourself difficult, you know. It's not people making you difficult most of the time. You hear what I mean? Because you understand something's wrong, huh? Correct or not? And then plus, if you don't want to hear what people explain to you, then that's it, no? That's it. End of the story. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't know, then you need to listen to what people say. Does it make sense? Okay. So you need to learn. Yeah. Everyone is learning, including me. Right. So we define locally connected and then we define locally connected at X. Similarly, we can define uh, locally path connected. So do you want to guess what does it mean by a locally path connected at X? Yes. You want to guess? Create a definition that makes sense. Hmm. Try. Wait, wait, slowly say again. Any neighborhood? Okay, so this neighborhood, you need to mention whose neighborhood, right? Whose neighborhood? Whose neighborhood is important? Or, okay, if I talk about local path connector at X, and then you give me a neighborhood at Y, then it doesn't make sense, right? So which point is very important? Okay, so similarly, you can define locally path connected at X by using a uh, similar definition to locally connected, whereby you say that for every open neighborhood U that contain X, okay, we are interested at the point X, there is a path uh, connected open neighborhood V containing X, which is in turn containing the set U. Make sense? So what we did, what we did, we really, we just uh, 
add extra uh, property to the V that is in the definition of locally connected. So here we change the adjective to love connected. Okay. Okay. So similarly, uh, how is the uh, how is the uh, how is the topological space locally path connected? You want to you want to try? Yes, right. because we already defined how to be connected at one point. Now we want it to be part connected at all points, at okay? every point, okay? no matter uh, which one you take. So that's right. So we just uh, take the similar definition here. Okay, and then we just add in part connected. Okay. So, um, what property you can think? Uh, what example you can think of? Let's see. Let's look at this example here. Uh, how about a random interval in R? Is this connected? Sorry, cannot separate. So how to prove to me I cannot separate? Can separate just produce one, right? So cannot separate how to produce, how to prove. Sorry? Okay, sure, that's fine. That's my contradiction. So assume you can separate then. And then what next? <laughs> what next? Sure. Try. Sure. Exercise now. Show that this is connected. Mm, try and give you three meetings to think about this. You can discuss with your friend how to show this is connected. Try and think. Yeah. Discuss with your friend how to show interval is connected. Oh, we have already proven. Is it so? How we did that? Did that also assume separation first, right? And then where's the contradiction then?
supplement in here. Sounds like it, or sounds like it, eh? Yeah, we did use some supplement argument. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so if you forgot, uh, please go back and recall this proof. Go and read why this uh, supplement contradiction works. Okay, so we proved that not just closed interval, any interval, okay, any interval that looks like this uh, category, they are all connected. So it's not trivial, meaning this is not trivial. Yeah, not too trivial because it involves construction of uh, using supremum. Okay. How about locally connected? Is it true or not? How to show? Okay, let's say, no, let's say this is a locally connected, right? Is locally connected. I mean, it is connected at all points. Correct. So then we just pick a random point inside your interval. Okay, just a random point. Take any random point inside your interval. You want to show that this interval is locally connected at that point. So what do you need to do? Sorry. What is that? Why is the topology? Yes, good. This is a very good question. Okay, you are dealing with topological space, so you need to ask what's the topology. Okay, so if we don't mention anything about R, usually we just take it as a Euclidean topology, this kind of normal one. Okay, I wish the basis is what? What's the basis of the normal, usual, standard Euclidean topology? Point AV, right? Okay, so these are the bases. Okay, so now here, how to prove that it is locally connected at every point? So let's take one point. Sure, but how do you start? You need to show for every open neighborhood. Right? Uh -huh. how, how to find? How to find? Sure, since the neighborhood is open. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, let me think. Neighborhood, then so how to find the smaller neighborhood? You sure? Which open neighborhood? Which definition are open? The topology is I be, I define one, right? I tell you what thing are open. But you are somehow using something. I'm not sure you realize or not. Choose a basis. Yes. Choose a basis between the uh, wrong X uh, containing X. So what you are using actually? You are using that the Euclidean topology is generated by a basis. And then there we define a topology that is generated by basis, how is it open? If an open set is open, is a set, if a set is open in the topology that generated by basis, that means for every point inside the set, you have a basis element that contains that point and then which is lying inside the set. 
So we need you need to know what basis generate us. Then you can find a smaller neighborhood that contain X. But okay, yeah, let's do that first and then I will talk more detail. So um, uh, even and open neighborhood. Of X, okay. We know that the Euclidean topology is generated by a basis. So we I hope you still remember how to show this as a basis. If not, make sure you go back and revise them. This kind of thing is really important for your midterm. My basis looks like open number A B where uh, A B is in uh, I give you more condition. If I give you if I give you if I don't put A Sydney greater than B, can you just regard it as an empty set? Yeah, because by the definition, it doesn't make sense if A and if B is less than A. Okay. Um, okay, uh, I think less than equal, right? We do we need a singular term? I think it's singleton open in Euclidean space. I think it's open. Singleton is open or not? I feel like singleton is not open. I think I don't want this. Singleton shouldn't be open, right? Because X throw away that point is a open. Yeah, I have to, sorry. Huh? BB is empty set. Is BB an empty set? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good, 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 good. First, I am an open interval here. Okay, okay, good. But I mean, I want to throw singleton as an open interval. I mean, open set. I think I don't want it. Because if I take a real line, take away that thing, it's not close. So I don't want it. Okay, right. So we know that the Euclidean topology is generated by a basis B. Okay, and then. Then V is open in, let's say we call this uh, T E. Uh, meaning, meaning what? We can pick A B or some A B in R such that. Such a what? Such that this open interval AB contain X and it is contained in contain contain X and contained in B. But uh, like what we did just now, we have shown that any kind of interval is connected. Okay, but this is. We show that this is connected, but not half connected. Eh? For the theorem, carry on. Okay, but this this sentence with what we want, we want connected only. Okay, sure. But this is connected um, by theorem before. By the same theorem, we show that the closed interval AB is connected. Yeah. Right. Actually, you you know more than this. You know more things about open neighborhood in X, right? Uh, sorry, open neighborhood in uh, real, right? I already asked you to prove it. Remember? Do you still remember? How does the open neighborhood looks like in R?
Sorry? Union. What kind of union? Oh? You prove so many things or so many adjectives you throw away. <laughs> no, who say arbitrary? Not arbitrary. Wait, what you guys prove in assignment, you guys really forget one. Huh? Those are very important results, you know. Yes, 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 yes. So many things you need to prove. So many adjectives you throw away already. What oh, cow? You know, uh, these assignments uh, is not for you to earn marks, you know. I want you to really appreciate the statement. Okay, you put so many effort to prove what? Wow, build by Jackson, uh, counterbury man, uh, and then destroy, uh, and then open some more. So many things you need to do. Why, how come you forget everything? Uh, this is not for marks, you know, this assignment. I really want you to appreciate this result. You get what I mean? Okay. So you see, we can do more precise analysis on this group, you know. Given an open neighborhood V of X, actually you can write it as a comfortably family of disjoint, open, interval, uh, not just set, you know, intervals, eh? Very precise, eh? Interval is an interval, you can write it down one like that, and Okay? And we know about intervals. You get what I mean? You get what I mean or not? So, which means what? They are disjoint, right? So meaning what? This that in this open neighborhood contain X or X can be in different different disjoint open interval. Can or not? Can or not? Cannot, right? So you must lie in one of the components in the disjoint union. And then you just take that open set as your locally as your what as your connected open neighborhood, the smaller connected open neighborhood. You get what I say? So, so you see, ah, uh, what I want to tell you, ah, uh, proof is not that, okay? And then you can do as precise measurement as you want. Okay, so for example, from assignment. We know that V can be written as a union of countably many uh, disjoint open neighborhood like that. So it's a disjoint neighborhood. So let's say we do it like this, disjoint neighborhood. Okay. So you say that X is in here, right? X is in here. So this implies that X must be in some, only one only that use the exists unit one. Right? Because they are disjoint. Okay, but this is an open, this is not just random I, uh, this is an open interval. Okay. So you found some connected uh, open neighborhood. But for this proof, eh, for the above proof, eh, this proof could be this A, B could change, can be smaller, okay. can, can only be smaller actually, <laughs> can only be smaller, yeah. Okay, this, this, this proof I think it gives you the largest connected uh, neighborhood that contain X, if given the neighborhood oh, orange. Sorry? Uh, sorry. So saying X thing. Oh, <laughs> in this S. I think it matches your expectation. <laughs> I'm not just kidding, just kidding. Okay, I'll sign up. I'll sign up. Right. So, yeah. Do you, 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 you guys understand? You, this two proof are different, you know. Not. Above, uh, I just I just take some basis element. So, I mean, this basis element could be lying inside this I, I, some more. And it could be something small. But this II is the largest connected component. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's let's continue. Uh, there are a few more examples. Maybe we just I just listed in the lecture note, and then if you don't understand, I will add some detail. If you don't understand, then uh, we can discuss. So my lecture note is like this. So. I try to fill in some gap in the literature. 
that I think is a gap I feel in, so that maybe if you read the textbook, you don't understand, then you can refer to my uh, explanation more. If my explanations you think still got gap, you can fill in yourself or you can ask me. Okay, does it make sense? Okay, yeah. so if you don't understand something right, don't just spend one day reading that thing. You should read different stuff. Okay? Otherwise, it won't be productive. You get what I mean? It won't be productive. Okay, don't spend whole day looking at the same thing. You should look for different things to give you ideas. Okay, uh, let's straight away go to the other result. Um, so there's a result says that a topological space is locally connected if and only if for every open set u of x uh, each connected component okay we define what is connected component before each connected component of u is open in x remember how we define this connected component we say that when we have two connected subspace ones that have the same same point in common then we can group them as one connected component remember the group okay so this is how we give this connected component Okay, so it's the largest, uh, largest set that contain a point. Largest connected set that contain. So what's this largest means? You take the union of all connected set that contain the point. Okay. So, uh, so here being locally connected to. Uh, connected component in every open set. Okay, you can try and prove this. This is a very uh, easy exercise on definitions. Similarly, you can get similar result if you put uh, path the adjective into it. So yeah. It's a very easy proof, so I think we need this for a very strong reason. So let's do this one. Okay, so let, let's do this. <clears throat> so here, if X is a topological space, okay, and I don't want to put this up like this, so every um, half connected component so we call it path component, is it? Let me see. We call it path, uh, path com component. So every path component, meaning uh, this inside within this component, there are path connected. Of X uh, lies in a connected component. Of X. So it is like a subset. So if you are half connected, then you are connected. And moreover, if X is locally half connected, meaning locally connected at every point, then, then these two components will coincide. Okay, so then uh, of component so the path component and the component does it make sense so this is how we use the uh, locally path connected okay Can you imagine what this uh, statement is talking about? Uh, do you understand what this statement is trying to do?
So the first segment says that every path connector component is part of a connector component. Okay. So maybe you have some, you, yeah, I cannot describe it now. And then the second part, what, what did he say? When these two components coincide, they coincide when the topological space is locally targeted. Okay, so how should we do here? The first segment is clear, right? Is the first segment clear? Is the first segment clear? Last time we proved that what? If a space is half connected, then it is connected. Okay. But now the second part here, if X is locally half connected, then actually this two components are the same. Okay. So meaning, meaning what? Meaning in the path connected uh, component, every point can be joined as a, can be joined as path, can be joined using path. And these two points also lie in some connected component. Okay, how we define connected component? If they are part of some connected set. Union of all connected set containing X. So if you are part of the same connected set, then I put you in. Okay. But the connected there is talking about separation. So if you lie inside some set that you cannot separate, then there's the connected set. Okay. So when the, when these two coincide, it coincide when the X is locally half connected. So can you imagine this connection or not? Can you imagine this connection? Half connector cannot stay in a separated component. I thought the one direction is you need connected component is in half connected. Right. You need to show that every element in a connected component is in the half connected component. So if you lie inside a connected component, meaning you should be able to be connected by a path. Yeah. All right. But things that this locally path connector can tell you that. Locally path connector say what? If you start with any open set, that contain the point X, then there will exist a potentially smaller, okay, half connected, open neighborhood, okay, that contain that X. So if you have that neighborhood, right, meaning what? All the other points inside that neighborhood can connect to the point using a path. So how do we do this? So well, let's try. Um, so let's do it. So proof. Let's call, let's give us something to talk about. So let C be a connected component. X. And 
let x be some point in C, and we need another thing is the path connector B. So we let P be a of x contain so um, so we know that path connectedness imply connectedness so in particular p is connected so this will means that P is contained in C. Okay, so we need the other direction. So we need the, the other direction saying that P equals to C. So how do we show this? We show this. So you have a subset or equal to. Huh? So suppose P is not equal to C. The loss P is not equal to C. Then what? What? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Something's wrong there. <laughs> what do you mean by a point is not path connector? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, wait, wait. It's right to say that uh, the point in C that is not in P is locally connected. I mean, it's not right. So, I mean, this. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So, for a point, okay, for a point that is in C, not in P, what can we do? For every neighborhood around that point, okay, we can find a. Uh, I will find a. Half a. This is half. Yeah, path connector neighborhood that contain that complement point, and also it is inside every neighborhood that we look at around that point. So okay, let me draw this. So let me let me draw what I say. So we got an X right. So let's do an X first. So let me use this. So we got an X space here, and then. Uh, we look at one point in C, sure. So let's look at one point in C. And what do we do here? We look at the path connector component like this, for example. So here is P. Okay. So what we discussed just now is, let's say it's not equal, right? If it's not equal, then there will be something in the complement of P. Let's say we call this the Y. Okay, what happened to this y? What happened to this y is if we pick any uh, open neighborhood around y, okay, we can find some neighborhood, smaller, potentially smaller neighborhood around y, which is contained in, let's say we call this a uh, random neighborhood v, which is locally which is locally, which is what? Not locally anymore, which is pump connected. So meaning inside this, uh, the purple small neighborhood, right? Everything can be connected by pump. Make sense? Is it? To blur. So, Everything inside this neighborhood, you can connect by probably as a spider web, if you like. Okay. 
It is, but how to create that contradiction? Yes, okay, let's do it. So what we're gonna do next is, um, so let, 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 let what? So let Q denote the union of all the half components of X, okay? That are that are different from P. So they are different from P and intersect C. Okay, so meaning we take all this sort of uh, so we take first of all we take all the points in the complement of P, then we can find all these half connected components using the locally uh half connected properties, okay, and, and take a union. So that, so that what? So that C is equal to P union U. Uh, I think this, this, uh, this equality requires some verification, but it's not too hard. This is almost like how we show that uh, our open set is a union of a basis set. So the end, so every point in the complement, you can find some open wall that do this uh, connected thingy. Okay, and then you just union them. Or do you want me to go through with you? Go through? Okay, okay. Is that okay or not? Or you want to go through? Uh, maybe I quickly say two words on it. So, because in every point C here, it should be some point in P or some point in Q. Why? Because how we make our Q? You take everything in the component of P and then you make a neighborhood around it. And then the neighborhood you look here is very special. It is half connected. So you look at all these. Okay. But so one direction is why this neighborhood would lie inside C? Eh? Also quite obvious. Eh? Because you what what kind of uh, V you consider? You are consider a V which is open in C. Does that make sense? Try and write it out. Uh, quite important. Uh, this one is uh, is the variant of how we show a basis, how we show an open set in the topology generated by a basis can be written as a union of basis set. What why I said this is a variant. Because there's only one extra property we put here, which is this is not random open neighborhood. This is half connected open neighborhood. Okay, so open neighborhood with property. Make sense? Okay, so you see, we are trying to apply what we have learned now. So now we just using what we did for topology. Now we consider extra property, path connectedness. And then topology, topology built on what? Eh? How do we prove this open stuff? We use set theory. So where's the foundation? So the foundation really just lies in the set theory. Okay, all right. So we did this. Okay, so where's the contradiction here? So this very much relies on what the theorem that we didn't prove just now. So this theorem says what? If your space is locally half connected, then every open set of X, for every open set of X, this open set, you can look at its half connected component and all of them are open, okay? So in particular, what? In particular, in particular, this P and Q are, open. They are open. Okay. They are destroyed. They are non-empty. 
okay, non empty because Q we build up by the assumption that the complement is non empty. Okay, so we have to produce a separation for C. So here is the contradiction because we assume C as a complement. So, so that this producing or producing a separation for C. Okay, so why is it open? Open by a uh, previous theorem. Disjoint, why is it disjoint? Disjoint by construction. Okay, why is it non empty? Non empty by assumption because we assume that P not equal to Q. Okay. Sense? Okay. So the result here is if your X is locally path connected, then uh, no matter. You want to talk about path co connector component or you want to talk about connector component, they are the same. Okay, if your space is locally path connected. Okay. If it's not, then you need to be careful. Make sense? Any question? Uh, if no question, is no question. Um, so, I want to do one uh, brave decision. <laughs> Everyone look out when I say brave decision. <laughs> um, so uh, I got some feedback saying that uh, because our assignment feedback was written late, right? Maybe you don't have the chance to change your style uh, or change your mistake uh, like that. Okay. Since I was not marking also maybe today and uh, maybe I'll start marking tomorrow evening. So let me guess what I say. <laughs> no, I don't want to guess, huh? Ah, seven five, about seven five. So I could give you extra time up to tomorrow 5 p.m., including those haven't submitted. This is your last chance, okay, to do your assignment five. And you all of you can do some modification to your answer based on my suggestion. Uh, tomorrow 5 o'clock p.m., working hour. Okay, after 5 p.m. close because we want to do exam already. Can I know? Does it make sense? Fair enough. Okay, so we'll open until 5 p.m. tomorrow to make to let you have a chance to change. Okay, 5 p.m. You don't want to change, it's your choice. Huh? Okay, but uh, I open up to 5 p.m. tomorrow. And please be reminded uh, uh, for your midterm, uh, bring uh, double sided A4. A4, uh, not A3. Uh. A smaller is your choice, uh, but cannot go bigger. A4, double sided, handwritten uh, cheat sheet. Okay. Paper uh, definition. Okay, they all do random stuff. Okay. If you don't follow my instruction, I can just uh, take your teacher away. Okay. So make sure you know why I'm talking about definition. Ask me if you don't understand. Okay. And for double sided, handwritten, cannot print it. Okay. Only handwritten. How small you want to write is your choice, but you cannot print it small. No technology. Make sense? Okay. So for Something can I have? 
and I want to advise you something because you never, very half of you never took my exam before. I will try to make midterm a slightly harder, okay, because I want to see how you perform. Okay, so what you're going to do in the exam will be please don't spend too much time on one question. If you don't understand, you just skip first because there's not much time for you to think. So you just can execute. Once you see okay, this definition, okay, use it. Go, 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 go. That makes sense. Okay. Only when you go through the whole paper and then you come back and think again. Okay. Don't start on one question. You will definitely have no time. Does that make sense? Okay. You have to be really prepared. I prepared so many revision class and tutorial shit for you. This is not for fun. Okay, you really have to do them, understand them, not memorize them. Right? Memorize, I can for sure tell you no use one. Then you can ask my student, how do you guys prepare for my exam? Huh? Okay, do exercise test book. Yeah, do more, do more. Okay, never memorize that. Huh? No use on my class. Okay. Do more. Make sure do until you understand what to use, how to use. Okay. There's a lot of uh, reference I put in the Moodle. Uh, that's why I put so many references there. It's not for fun also. Okay. So if you think that, sir, I do after I do your tutorial share, I still don't understand. Good. Moodle still have exercise. Go and do it. I put out even put out a solution manual for you already. Okay. What if you met a problem? Sir, this question, I look at the solution, I still don't understand. Bring it here. Okay, bring to the forum. Okay, you can discuss with us. Okay, not just you. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay, I understand that most of the students here, they have this kind of, I don't know, self pride. Self pride. I didn't say self esteem, eh? 自信, 自信是要有的, okay. we, are, we are learning, not showing you how strong. Okay, no. We are learning here. Does it make sense? Okay. In my class, you have to learn as much as you can. So this is, I, I won't restrict you one. So this is really dependent on you, how far you can go. Okay. If you can go far, I can push, help to push you one. You don't worry. Okay, so then this will really differentiate student to students already. Huh? Don't think that you run faster than me. Huh? Later you drop into long gun. Eh? Who knows? I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, how say, huh? I'm not trying to curse you, but what I want to say is focus on your own path. Okay, don't look at the others too much. You can look a bit, but focus on yourself. What's not good about you? Change it. Okay, if you want to be better, change it now. If it is too late, you can't change already. Right, if you want to wait until 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, even harder to change, I tell you. Wow, well, it's so hard to talk to my father now. You know. <laughs> the harder, uh, the harder, the harder you can change. Uh. So change now, please. Okay. Mm. Let's take a break until 12 or 15 and then we'll come back with compactness.
Okay, uh, let's continue. So uh, typically, if we have um, a homeomorphism between two topological spaces, okay, there's a two uh, homeomorphism between two topological spaces, then we will say that um, say that x and y are topological Okay, why are we why we say that? What does the homeomorphism do? The homeomorphism do? Hmm? What does the homeomorphism do? Definition. Objective. Continuous. With inverse continuous. Yes, that's the point. Okay, so what does this three adjective do? Sorry? You send open set to open set, and then you send when you send it back, you still send it back to open set. So there's a bijective correspondence between the open set, not just point. If bijective it is just point, but here is open set to open set. So there's a correspondence between the topology between the two. So we said that the two topological space are topologically equivalent, equivalent if there is a homeomorphism. You see that? Mathematics, uh, when we use equivalence, means what? We use equivalence. When? Huh? How many? You want to say something? You know, the one. When, when, when we use equivalence, when we always use equivalence. Sorry? What kind of same? What is same in mathematics? Sorry? Sure, definition, but what's the notion of sand we always put inside mathematics? Sorry? Property? What kind of property? What's the notion of sand in mathematics? Okay, huh? It is equivalence relation. So whenever we use equivalent, the word equivalent, of often we just means equivalence as a equivalent relation. So what is saying here? You have to be the same way yourself. Otherwise, how is what is saying? Okay. If I'm the same with Jin Xiang, then Jin Xiang is exactly me. Okay. And this sameness can transfer. If x equals to y, y equals to z, then x equals to z. Transitive, okay, more precise. Okay, this is the notion of same in mathematics. So if they are topologically equivalent, then there's a homeomorphism between them. So you can easily see that why x is homeomorphic to x. Why x if x is homeomorphic to y, y, y is homeomorphic to x. The inverse. X homeomorphic to x is just the Identity. Identity is a homeomorphism. Okay. You can compose homeomorphism. It's still a homeomorphism. Okay. So whenever you see this kind of property, uh, you can quickly come up with a equivalence relation. Right? Okay, so you can group things together under equivalence classes. Right? So this is how you should think about this kind of uh, abstract maths. Okay, so we're trying to group same people together. Um, so uh, what did we show last time? Yeah? What did we show last time? Uh, we showed that, um, 
So last time, so last time, we showed that the open interval zero to one and closed interval zero to one is not homeomorphic. Okay, why? Because if you take out one point from zero to one open interval, so let's say we take out a point, so let's say we take out say one from the closed interval zero to one. This means I have to take out, so let's say there's a map hash here, then I need to take out hash one inside this interval. So hash one should be some number in between zero and Say a homeomorphism coding H. But we prove that homeomorphism should send connected component to connected component. Yeah, so there's no such homeomorphism that did that. But uh, maybe you can think that, oh, maybe I can use this kind of uh, idea to differentiate whether two uh, set are uh, topological. Equivalent or not. Right. So how about consider let's say a bigger set. So let me let's say uh open ball. So let's do an open ball. How about the open ball? Here. How about open ball and a closed ball. Does there exist a homeomorphism? Okay. Can we use the technique just now? I remove one point from one side, remove one point from the other side. Okay, can we differentiate or not? Okay. Not sure. Okay, it's not clear. Okay. So uh, there's another way, okay, that we can differentiate uh, whether we have a topological uh, equivalent topological space, which is through the compactness. Okay? Later you will see how we apply compactness to these two spaces. Okay, later we will come back again. Uh, so let's define a few objects. Or what object we want to define here? Okay, so let me see uh, which one is a cleaner way to do it. Let's do it okay, this way. So a collection. Collection of subset. Of a space X, say cover X. Okay, so we define what does this cover mean? So, what do you mean by cover? Okay, what do you mean by cover? What do you mean by cover? Your container need cover or not? Your umbrella need to cover you or not? Okay, so what kind of cover is here? So it's say to cover or it is a covering of F, uh, sorry, X. This is the covering if the union of elements in A is equal to X. Or in other words, in other words, what? So X is equal to the union of everything. Every AI such that AI is in the set of script A. Okay, so this is what it means to be 
covering, but what is called an open covering? It's called an open covering if all the elements are the open set. If all AIs are of X. Okay. Okay. So we have open covering now. We have covered. Okay. So actually, you see, uh, when you look at when you look at this uh, defining properties, right? Actually, you have seen this kind of uh, equation before already, right? Have you seen this kind of thing before? A set can be written as a union of some set. You did that, right? Especially what? Sorry, basis element. Yes. You write your open set as a union of basis element. So in that case, you say that the set of basic element will cover your set, the open set. Yeah, right. So what we do here is we didn't really introduce any new concept. Uh. We only introduced new word. And yeah, we want to describe this process. What do you mean by I can write uh, X to be a union of some set? And I will say that this collection of set will cover X. Make sense? Okay. So this is just new word. Concept is all. We already know we can, in some condition, we can do that. Okay. And moreover, it is called open cover when there are all the open sets. So the basis elements will be the open cover for your open set. Okay. No? So we just give a new name. Nothing special here. But what is special here is we will define that a space, a topological space, is compact if every such open covering X will contain a finite sub collection. That also cover X. So sometimes, right? Sometimes these word, right? We will refer it to uh, uh, here. We will refer this kind of uh, sub collection to uh, and not don't want find that just sub collection that also cover X. We will refer it to sub cover. Okay, so how to how to show a space is compact? This dimension. How to show? Sorry, do you have anyone to try how to show? Hey, I want to show a space is compact. Sure. Don't know. Definition here. You need to check what kind of statement is true. That might is just one open covering. What do you have to do to every open covering? It contains a yes. When we say finite sub cover, is it, it means sub collection that also cover X. So meaning you can out of this open covering, so out of any open covering, if this open covering is finite, then finite already there. Okay, but what if this cover is infinite? Can you find a finite sub collection such that 
the union of them, you still can recover whole space. Does that make sense? So this one has to work for every, uh, okay? If every office covering is already finite union, then you're done already, uh, correct? Uh, but say you can cover your space using infinite element. The same skill as this uh, finite one, finitely many of them, still I can recover my whole space. If you can, then you are compact. If you cannot, then you are not compact. No? True or false? No? Make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, uh, should I? Okay, give you an example first. Okay. Let's give you an example first. Okay, so what space are compact? What space are not compact? Oh, it goes in the test. Right? You try. Real number, huh? real number is not compact. So this is what you claim, right? So why? So, okay, before asking you why, so we need to check this, right? So what do we need to check? We just need to find one open covering such that it doesn't have finite a cover. So out of one open covering, you cannot pick finitely many of them to recover your R. Okay, so what, so what open covering you want to take here? So let's write over to be some open covering first. What open covering you want to take? Okay. Union of uh, minus k to k, close or open or open because we want open. And then this k is indexed from one to infinity. One to infinity, sure. Okay. So is it clear that, okay, first of all, this is infinite many, okay, countably many, in, in fact, countably many of open set, okay, and then you write it as a, you, you write R as a union of these open sets, so it's an open covering because cover it, right, cover it, because it is a, R is equal to union of this thing, need to share or Mathematically, you need to check up, but is it obvious? Obvious, right? Obvious or not? Uh, if it's not obvious, uh, this is also almost the same as the basis, represent the open set as a basis, union of basis element. It's same, it's the same. So for every R, right, you can find some Minus k to k interval that contains it. Okay. And then, if you pick one interval on the right hand side, it is already enough. So, union of them is still enough. So, can you pick a finite subcover to cover x? It cannot y. Let's say Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Huh? Okay, I think it makes sense. If it's finite, so if you take finitely many of them, then you can find a maximum from who? Uh, from all the interval. Huh? Or oh, the index of the interval I choose. Okay, also works. Yeah, also works. Okay. Okay. You don't understand or not? Okay. Understand what we are talking about? So if you have only finitely many of them, you want to show that this, you cannot get the whole R back, right? So if you Union finitely many of them. How does it look like? It looks like minus k to k, right? So you can look at the maximum of the k you have. And you can find something in R which is not in all these 
in the world. Okay, in particular, you just pick the maximum plus one. Maximum plus one. Because I think this is the nature of this interval, because this interval is nested. If your interval like is not nested, but maybe overlap a bit, then you need to reconsider your argument. Although also the other argument is if I simply take out one of them, right? I will also be in trouble, right? I cannot miss any one of the brand. Can or not? Can they? Oh, can or oh, this one is nested. Okay. If you write down in the other way, then maybe you cannot. Yeah. Maybe what kind of way we can do? Right? We can do like, uh, okay, in my mind, it's something like this, but um, I'll write down. So maybe we can do something like this. Uh, so how can I do this? Uh? I think this is not too hard, right? Anyone got my ideas or not? <laughs> okay, okay, try, 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 try. So we also can write this as a union of K, K2 plus one, I did. Same thing, K and Z, huh? K and Z, K and Z, mm, K and Z. Okay, let me let me let me try and write this down if this is this is working. K plus two one. Okay, okay, let's draw 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 it out. Okay, so sure 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 sure. Okay, let me try one zero one. Yeah, correct. If it is this one, then uh, I will miss out one. Right. So K plus two. Try K plus two. So like this. And then I will, the first one I would have is 0, 2, 2. And then the second one I have is 1, 2, 3. Yes, correct. And this one works. Okay. Yeah. So for, if I take out any one of them, then I think I will miss some point. Definitely. Okay. No need to go find, uh, no need to go find that even. Okay, uh, R is not compact. Uh, hey, this K plus 2 is the example inside the book. Oh. Wow, surprisingly. Okay, never mind. Um, what else? Uh? What else? Yeah, questions. You have to ask whether complex number is compact or not, is it? Oh, you mean R not compact? Is, is it like R not compact implies this? But N and Z is, is different, right? Because they, how to say that? Uh, okay, the, 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 the inclusion looks like this. So N is in, uh, in Z. Z. And then Z is in R. Uh, in maybe you can do Q first, and then you can do R, and you can do C like that. Oh. Sorry. At the moment, I'm also not sure. <laughs> I mean, th those are good statement to 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 verify. Yeah, those are good ver statement to verify. But as for what Brian asked is whether. Or whether all these okay, there are few few things lie inside your statement. Okay, so if you want to ask whether all these okay, so first question is whether all these set are compact. Second question, actually, just now you point out one point, right? Whether R is not compact implies C is not compact because we know that C is defined to be R plus I R. So if you contain a non-compact subspace, does it imply that you are non-compact? 
No, you got contact example. So wait, 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 okay, okay. So you put zero to one, open or close? Close it. <laughs> so the bottom one is not compact, but the top one is compact. Okay, so we need to verify this statement, right? So, um, so how to verify? Uh, I think this one is very hard, and this one. This one, I mean, sorry, this one is hard. So later we will prove it, this is true. So now we assume this is true first. So how about showing that closed interval, uh, open interval is not compared? For every open cover, you need to show that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, just find one and then such that it doesn't have a final sub cover. No? Okay, I think it's the same trick we did this one. Can you see the same trick or not? If cannot, you just yell out that it's okay one because we are learning now. Or should we just write one down? Can we write one down? We write one down that doesn't have a finite sub cover. Just now we care about whole real line, right? Just now I will just string it, string to zero to one. So it's literally the same technique. So you want to use which technique? Use Jinpo one, huh? One over k minus one over k to four over k. One over k to one over k k plus one. Over k plus one to k over k plus one. Does this work? K going from zero to infinity. One probability. Okay, so let's let's try and see what this is doing. So k goes to one, this thing is half. And then when k goes to one, the other endpoint is half, half, just one point. Half. So the first one is just a point. And this I'm not sure. So how about two? Two is one third. Two is one third, one third, maybe somewhere around here. Nice. Because the right, right, because the k over k plus one is one minus the length. Okay, so you mean you should have already take the difference like this? Oh, no, 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 no. Because the right number is the but it's one minus the left number. Yeah. So it's like you are going like this. Um, don't like this. So, and, and the left one approach the other, the right one approach one. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, sure. Let me, let me, let us just run through what is it, what is it trying to do. So, one over three, and then the other side, I get one over two. Okay, so one over two, like this. Okay. Oh, we start with, oh, we already start all the two, all right, two over three. Oh, they add up to one. Yes, yeah, sure. They add up to one. Uh, wait, ah, uh, they add up to one. They add up to one. Mm, true. Right. That's true. That's true. And then the left hand side, of course, zero mark. So the right hand side. Well, but I was thinking, like, what is this trying to do? To uh, oh, 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 okay, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, how does this adding out one to one like? Because the, yeah. the, the left hand, the left hand number approach to zero. Because they want to understand, yeah. And because the, they add to one, so the one will go to the right hand side approach one. Oh, so what you mean is like this. Uh, the, the right hand side, the right hand side is the 
is the usual analysis trick, right? This is equal to one minus one over k. So, so, so what? So, like what you say, okay, like what you say, uh, yeah, this is what MA1 did. So, this side converge to zero, right? Okay, that means what? This will converge to one minus zero, which is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. But, but, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I still want to see like how the consecutive uh, interval cover, like, in overlap with each other. So maybe let's do one more. Larger. Could, could it be nested or just overlap? Nested. One over four, and then the other one is three over four. I think it's nested. You can show that. Yeah, you should show it. When K1 greater than K2, then you show it. They are nested. Yeah, there Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, question. Is open? Wait, 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 this, that one of two lie inside the first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes better. Yeah, sometimes better. Uh, but this time doesn't matter. Because it's like, it's just a cave. If you put negative, then it matters. <laughs> So it matters, it matters, it matters. Just that uh, when k goes to one, we can we still compute it. It is empty set. Yeah. Uh, also the same because you are union with empty set. This is the that's the thing we prove that like. you need a set union with an empty set equals to the set so. Yeah. so this is non-trivial. We use it here. Mm. Non-trivial. Okay. It's like the cancel set. You you although it's like. It's like, uh, it's like C infinity, but you take the intersection because when we're in X, what do you mean? Because it's like a final result. Huh? The, it's a what result? It's, it's actually like C infinity, like in C, like C K is in C, like C K minus one, and until C one. Sure. It's still the same same idea, huh? but less the yeah, less yeah, the less yeah, the idea is nested. So why this one doesn't have a finite subproblem? Okay, sure. Use the same argument. Okay, use the same argument. If you have finite many of them, just find the maximum element. But here it's finite, it's easier to find out, but the thing we prove in the assignment is infinite. We want to find the smallest one. It's a dual thing. Okay. But this one finite you need to find. But the question is, the question is, the question is, you 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 are not finding finite. You are not just finding finite covering. You need to for every over covering find a finite sub cover. Different, you know. Ah. Every open covering, you need to find a finite sub covering. You are doing two things. You are using, you are like dealing with two things, not just one thing. You are, you are not just finding a finite covering. Okay. What I mean is, okay, get this paper right. You cannot just find a finite sub cover. You cannot just find a finite covering to prove a set is compact. This is the statement you need to hold. Okay, why cannot go back to the definition? Make sense? You cannot just find finite covering to prove a set is compact. You can, right? If you can, uh, all, every set is compact. <laughs> <laughs> if you can every set is compact, just pick your space up. 
Because the, the whole set is uh, open, right? Every set is compared, nothing to say, right? Okay, now. So every open covering has a finite subcover. Okay, but what we do here is we found, we take, we take a deviation that exists an uh, open covering that has no finite subcover. If I consider finitely of them, I cannot cover, I cannot recover my set. I cannot recover my set. Also, this is the point of compactness. I want to recover my set with just finitely many covering. This is compactness. Okay. Okay, I think we we'll have good discussion on examples already. Um there are more examples in the book, and I will uh, slide it into my lecture notes and i think we stop at this point here so uh, there are equivalent statement here so x is compact tfae let me get smaller a bit if c is a collection of open set and every finite sub collection fell to cover e cover x then c fell to cover x can I recognize this or not this is the contra positive. Look at the contra positive of the statement. If C can cover X, then what? Then C is a collection of open set and there's some finite collection that cover X. So it's a contra positive of our definition. But the last, the last one require and equivalence, equivalence between open set and closed set. How do you get open set to closed set usually? You just look at the complement. Okay, so you can see that uh, X is compact. If F is a collection of closed sets such that every finite collection F1 up to Fn has non empty intersection. Okay, then intersection of the whole collection is uh, non empty. Okay, so union become intersection. So you need to try and show this uh, TFA, uh, TFA using uh, complement concept. Okay. See whether you can play around with the definition or not. And we define a few more words here. So we define that a collection of a closed set of a topological space has the finite intersection property. The finite intersection property if Every finite subcollection of F has non-empty intersection. So we call we call uh, the condition the uh, sufficient condition in C to be a finite intersection property. Okay, and then we deduce that a topological space S is compact if and only if every collection of closed set with finite intersection property has intersection of everything to be. And so there's a two description about compactness. So you can use open cover one. You also can use this closed set one to check. Let's see if uh, the closed set is easier to use in your topological space or uh, open set is easier to use. In particular, in uh, how say, in algebraic geometry, we often only deal with closed set because these are the uh, how to say when you want to put a graph right. That property is closed because we want to check points that are satisfying some algebraic equation equal to something. That that property is closed. Okay, so in algebraic uh, geometry, we often only consider closed set. So then this equivalent definition will be very useful. Okay, I'm try and prove this. This one is just a play around with definition, and then we will come back with. Oh no, we have a revision on Monday, right? Monday. What time? Uh? 9 to 11. I posted up in the Moodle already. And we already have the classroom at the same place we had two placement. Okay, so if can, maybe someone can uh, inform Pak Hong and uh, GJ about the assignment delay and also the uh, Revision class because GJ was very excited, right? Huh? 
Okay. Assignment uh, deadline until tomorrow, 5 p.m. Yes, office hour, office hour. Office hour, okay.